Hello everybody, hope you guys are enjoying your day. Today we're going to be looking at your next Arctic Blast, which is going to be impacting parts of the Midwestern Great Lakes and Northeastern United States with some pretty cold air that is going to be intruding come the middle and latter portion of next week. And we're going to be talking about that. Uh, and now this is going to be a weaker version of what happened uh, pretty much uh, yesterday, uh, the day before, and uh, even the day before that. Uh, really what happened mid to late this week is it's really going to be pretty much the same exact thing uh move out quickly uh but the thing is uh this one is actually going to be a little bit weaker but it is going to stay a little bit longer than the one that we just saw so it's definitely going to be a little bit uh, more long lasting and we're going to be talking about this uh and also tomorrow i will have my weekly forecast to so make sure you do check that out i do that every single sunday so let's start off here with the national weather service so now we have some winter weather advisories winter storm warnings and winter storm watches in effect for parts of the northwest and winter weather advisories in the uh in the purple winter storm warnings in the pinks uh and winter storm watches in the blues we have those winter weather advisories for parts of washington and oregon as well as the northern part of Idaho and also for parts of northwestern Montana as well as northeasternmost Nevada and we have those winter storm warnings in effect for parts of easternmost Idaho as well as northeastern and southeastern parts of Washington and Oregon and we also have that over uh, just to the north and west of Denver there in parts of the mountains. And then we have winter storm watches for parts of western Wyoming, southern Montana, as well as uh, northern Colorado. So uh, also for the rest of the United States, pretty much clear. We just have some flood warnings in effect for parts of the southeast and a couple counties there in northwestern Minnesota and northeast North Dakota with some wind chill advisories still in effect for those uh, cold temperatures and that Arctic blast that we're seeing right now. So. I want to take a look at the temperature anomalies. Uh, we're we're going to look at the U United States uh, in just a minute. But first, I do want to look at uh, the a Canada view of what's uh, going on. Because all your cold air is bottled up. Uh, and I think this is a very good view of where this cold air is. And it's bottled up in northern uh, and northwestern Canada here. And it's because you have that jet stream, that polar jet stream, that's just staying pretty much something like this. Uh, and it did dip down this weekend uh, or this week. And it did dip down. And that's why you saw some cold air uh, for the first time in quite a while dip into parts of the United States. But for the most part, it's been locked up here over parts of northwest Canada and over parts of northern Alaska where where you've seen all that cold air and this is uh and really you're gonna see how this cold air moves far uh, further to the south now this is getting by sunday now by uh monday and you're starting to see it's moving a little bit farther to the south and you also see a little bit more strengthening in that cold air and then as we continue this it starts to spill into the united states as you get the system to move by uh which we also talked about on my channel yesterday so you can go check out that video but this is really going to allow this uh, jet stream to now go something like this it's dipping further to the south and now you have this warm air ahead of the system uh but your system would be uh situated something like this you have your warm front uh and your cold front but you also uh, have all that warm air ahead of it and you have all that cold air behind it uh, and uh, that system is allowing this cold air to be dragged on the back side and you see all that cold air being leaked further to the uh to the south and really something that's going to weaken all this cold uh, cold air uh this could be a primal setup for some very very cold air kind of something like what we had last january uh, if you remember with the uh, record breaking uh cold temperatures over parts of the midwest great lakes and northeast we could we could have had something like that but you notice we have some above average temperatures actually over parts of the polar region so what you you would want is some below average temperatures in those areas and it kind of just spilling far to the south uh, and that's what would have allowed for some very cold air but uh, unfortunately we don't have that setup we actually have the warm air locked up to the north so it's not going to be a primal setup and it's also going to move out very fast but definitely you will still get some pretty cold air as you got this would be by wednesday and now getting uh into thursday you see it's starting to move further to the east and something also interesting with this this is going to stay around for pretty much the entire week according to many models you can see on the southernmost part of that screen uh and you can see how the southeast and south central is still under below average and they're going to stay below average uh which we'll show you in just a minute now 
Here's uh, the jet stream. Now, this is showing you where your winds are uh, just a couple thousand feet above our heads. And uh, this is going to give you a good indication of what your jet stream looks like. So, now we're going to fast forward this to the uh, point where your cold air is starting to be released. Now, your jet stream is going something like this. You have this, uh, you have this large ridge out in the west and then you have this troughing out in the uh, out in the east which basically means the jet stream is dipping down further to the south so you have this uh, you have this cold air to the north of this jet stream your jet stream uh, is basically this red and orange and yellow area so this is your jet stream to the north of this you're going to have your cold air so as we uh, continue this you're going to see we have that cold air start to dip in to parts of the united states and you start to see we get below this we got a uh we get north of this jet stream so uh, your jet stream is now doing something like this and you have this straight fire hose jet stream straight into parts of Europe and that, uh, that's why your cold air is not going to last really unless you live in the south uh, which it, it's really going to stay for the south but uh, if you don't live in the south it's really going to move out because you have this jet stream that's allowing pretty much all systems to rocket across the Atlantic and we actually had some record breaking speeds from New York City uh, from New York City to London we had record setting uh travel speeds in airplanes uh they went they went uh about two hours uh, faster than they were expected to, and that's because they rode uh, the jet stream, and the jet stream was going at record uh, fast speed. So it's really a very strong jet stream that's not allowing any of this cold air to stay, and that's really the pattern we've been in the entire winter, and that's why you haven't seen any long periods of cold air over parts of the eastern United States. Now, let's get into your two-meter temperature anomalies for parts of uh, the United States. Now, this is one model representation of what's going to happen so of course this is going to change uh, but it'll give you a good idea of what the models are thinking so far so here uh, is that cold air starting to infiltrate uh, as you get into your Tuesday time period it's over parts of the uh, northwestern and north central United States warmer ahead of the system you can really tell where the system is setting up you see your system would be somewhere right around here by this point uh, and it's going to be moving to the east, uh, and as it moves to the east with that fire hose jet stream that's straight across the Atlantic, it's going to move out very fast, and then that will allow on the backside this cold air to be unleashed. So, you see, anywhere in those greens, that's over 8 degrees below average, and if you get in those purples, that's over 16 degrees below average, and in your in those uh, pr uh, purples, uh, or those darker purples, kind of, kind of a magenta or pink, uh, you're seeing over negative 30 or over 30 degrees below average so uh, you're going to start to see some of those colors actually pop up and you see very below average moving through the central united states and then uh you see very widespread over the eastern united states and this is something we didn't see with this uh with this recent one uh the recent one was really a, conf a confined to the northern tier of the united states and this one is going to be able to move its way further to the south uh and pretty much all of that arctic air mass is going to be shifted further to the south because you do have that replacement with some warm air to the north so that's actually allowing uh all this cold air to move to the south but it's also not allowing this cold air to strengthen really now you see, we have widespread over 8 degrees below average uh, in many of these areas. Now, this is one model run, so this is, of course, going to change. But th th really, it's over many model runs and over many different models, including the GFS and the Canadian model, both showing the same event uh, pretty much in the same fashion. Now, this would be by Friday, and now getting into Saturday, uh, you're starting to see it still continue, but what I said about it staying over the South Central and Southeastern United States, that is definitely going to happen, and it looks like it's going to stay for quite a while, and you see it stays for the entire model run, so uh, the rest of winter could be quite cold uh, if you do live in the South Central or Southeastern United States, mainly the Gulf Coast region, uh, and then it looks to get warm uh, warm again over much of the rest of the country, except for the west, according to this model run. Now, let's take a look at your actual temperatures uh, that would be indicated. Now, again, this is just one model, and this is multiple days out, so we're going to take this with a grain of salt, but uh, it'll give you a good indication of where the coldest air is going to set up. So, here's getting into your Tuesday time frame. You're starting to see those negatives start to creep in uh, to parts of the United States, but also, you see, uh, we do have... 
that cold air start to persist, uh, and really the heart of this cold air is going to come on Friday of next week, where you see we're getting 20s very far to the south. I'll draw the line of where you're uh, over 30 degrees, and you see uh, it's pretty far to the south here, uh, where you're over 30 degrees. Uh, so you see that. 20 uh 20 degrees are really pushing its way further to the south and that where you're in the teens anywhere north of this line is really in the teens so you see it's very very cold over uh the united states come next friday if this were to set up and you see even negatives entering parts of the interior northeast so that's definitely something that we'll have to take into account and i'll definitely have another update on this if this still is showing in the models so Here's your wind chill temperatures, and of course, this is going to change uh, quite a bit, but we do uh, we do want to look at this because it does give us a pretty good indication of how it's going to feel on your skin, and it's going to feel very cold if you live over parts of the Midwest and Great Lakes. You see uh, negative digits very widespread by Thursday, according to this model run, and then uh, by Friday, uh, it's getting a bit more widespread over parts of the Northeast, but even uh, those very cold temperatures are reaching very far to the South, so that's definitely something very interesting, uh, and I'll definitely Definitely update you guys on this uh, on this very cold air as we do get later on uh, and as we do get closer to this event. So make sure you are staying tuned and that you are subscribed as I do make these videos daily. Anyways, guys, that was Eli's with the guy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.